Now, we all know what sugar does to the body, but how can it affect the brain? We wanted to know, so I asked ABC News correspondent, sugar lover, and my friend and colleague, mm -hmm. Phil Lipoff, if he wanted to take a functional MRI to find out what sugar does to his brain. We should note he did fast over 12 hours before his scan. Take a look. Our friend Phil Lipoff loves sugar. Oh, how are you? Oh, how I'm is good. your sugar? Um, oh. oh, right off the bat, <laughs> we're going to do that. You're trying to get me off of sugar just and so people know that I'm not well. the poster boy for sugar. By the way, what is this? This is, are you five? We're going to do a Phil intervention here. American adults consume an average of 17 teaspoons of added sugar daily, two to three times more than recommended. 31% comes from snacks and sweets, and beverages are a leading category. Studies show sugar can induce reward in humans that's comparable to addictive drugs. So we're gonna put you in the MRI scanner, functional MRI at baseline, then I know this is why you <laughs> signed up for this. You're feed me. Yes, then we're gonna actually give you a lot of sugar. Nice. And we're gonna put you back in the scanner and we're gonna see what happens. With the help of Neurotherapeutics and the CUNY Advanced Science Research Center, Phil will get two 45-minute scans, a service that costs thousands of dollars but was waived for ABC News for this demonstration. We can actually see what part of the brain is active and what part is not active. When there's a glucose going to your system, then that has a chain of consequences at the neurobiochemical level that involves also the brain. I'll be right here if right. you need anything. Right. So this, where it's outlined in red, is the nucleus accumbens, which, AKA the pleasure center. Right. But what you would expect with Phil is to see the fMRI sort of light up in that area. After an hour, it was sugar for Phil. Look at this, Oh, they Phil. went and they got the pudding. Well, I haven't had a soda in a long Have time. Have some sugar. The pure happiness. With pudding, candy, and soda in his system, it was time to go back. You're probably feeling pretty good now, pretty though, good. right? Yeah, pretty I good. Bet, I Better bet than you before. are. All right, so you're doing great. And then we'll see what your brain looks like. Mm. We are joined now by Phil Lipoff and Dr. Nicole Avina, research neuroscientist who actually studies the effects of sugar on the brain, and she authored the book, Sugarless. She was also my teacher when I was getting my degree <laughs> in nutrition. So I want to start with you, Dr. Avina. Talk us through Phil's scans and what really stood out to you. Well, when I took a look at the scans, one of the things that immediately stood out was that after you had the sugar, you could see on the inside of your brain, that's the pleasure area, and it lit up in response to that sugar. And so you are being forced to, in many ways, crave that sugar and want more and more of it because you have this increased activity in the reward parts of the brain. So I was wondering, are there things I can eat instead of that will do similar things to my pleasure center that yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I recommend is if you're looking to make changes to your diet, really embrace the fruits. Fruits can really be beneficial if you have sugar cravings and if you're trying to get off of the added sugar. Fruits have fiber, they have other nutrients in them. You also want to think about your beverages. Start off with like coffee, for example. Most coffees have tons of creamers, tons of sugars. You want to really try to minimize them and cut back on them where you can. And like you said about cold turkey, I don't advocate that. It's not really sustainable. It makes it really difficult for people to stick to. So take baby steps. Start with making one small change and go from there. And then lastly, the thing I really recommend is know where those hidden sugars are. There's over 200 different names for added sugar. And so you really need to familiarize yourself with those names so you can identify it if it's in some of the foods that you want to eat. Don't you think it takes time to retrain your taste buds for someone who really is addicted to sugar? Absolutely, and I've heard from so many people over the years that once they cut back on the added sugar, then when they start to eat things like fruits, for example, they actually taste sweet. But we have to give it time. Our brain has to heal and our taste buds have to heal too. Be patient with, your, with yourself. We believe in you, we're here for you. Oh, it's a different tune uh, now, <laughs> <laughs> after the MRI. That's right, that's right. Uh, Dr. Nicole Avina, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. And Dr. Avina's new book called Sugarless, exactly what Phil's goal is, <laughs> is available now. Dr. Avina, thank you so much again. 
there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.